I am an international arms dealer at age 21. I make these arms for children to use. Now, that's an interesting area of expertise for someone my age. How do you even end up where? Well, today I'd like to talk to you about that, how I ended up here, and what I learned, and how I learned to do it. It all started with Nerf guns. How many of you guys have played with Nerf guns? Maybe some of you guys have even participated in Nerf wars in your schools, running around the city with your friends, trying to tag other people, and advance to later rounds of the game. Well, I know in high school, me and my friends did that a lot. And of course, one of the most important parts of Nerf wars was how tactical your blasters looked. Didn't matter how well they worked, but it did matter how they looked. Whether we had scopes, laser sights, or were even painting them, we all had a lot of fun tricking out our, Lego, our, our Nerf blasters. But more about my Nerf guns later. Right now, I want to talk about how you get there. How do you have the information and resources to build something like that? How do you start failing your way to success? Now, resources, they enable people to do great things. But unfortunately, a lot of people don't have access to the kind of resources that we use to build great things. But what happens if you do? What can be made out of that? Me, I was really fortunate to go to a school that really encouraged active exploration outside the classroom. One of these things was Science Olympiad. We got to learn about a myriad of scientific topics, all through hands-on setting. For me, one of my years, I was competing in shock value. It was an event all about electricity and circuits. After four months of really rigorous studying and one day of incredibly stressful competition, I went home and made the following entry into my personal journal. I am grateful that I competed in shock value because now I know I never want to be an electrical engineer. So this is great, right? A lot of us come into college, maybe we don't know what we want to do, maybe we change our minds a few times before we graduate, but here was me in middle school, and I already knew one thing I definitely didn't want to do. So, in high school, I spent my time preparing for a pre-med curriculum. And now, nearly 10 years after I initially wrote this, I came to the University of Michigan to study and become a doctor, and in May, I'll be graduating with my degree in electrical engineering. <laughs> So what happens if we take some of that book knowledge and we pair it with another exciting technology? 3D printing, additive manufacturing. Well, in my high school, again, we were really fortunate. I was able to write a grant proposal and get a little bit of money and a little bit of space to buy a 3D printer just to have fun. No class, no grades, and as you can see, me and my friends were definitely working very hard with that printer. Now, let's talk about the second type of thing that goes into building amazing stuff. Support of those around you. This here is my family. My two parents, my two older brothers, and my younger sister. There's never a dull moment around them. We always have a lot of fun. We're an engineering family. No matter what the, uh, what the problem is, whether it's mechanical, electrical, or even software, there's a good chance a few of us will be able to figure that out together. But more importantly is my dad, who's been a real catalyst to be able to, to help me do the work that I do today. Now, part of his support comes from him enabling me to try new things. But one of the most valuable things that he's ever done for me is prohibit me from buying a toy. Now, back to the Nerf guns. I had found some really cool accessories online, and I said, hey, I want to purchase these for my Nerf guns. They're going to be cooler than everyone else's. And my dad, a Michigan-trained engineer, said no. Instead, what he proposed was he would fund and help me to go build my own. Didn't matter if it cost more than the original thing would be to purchase, but he wanted me to learn how to do it. Out of desperation, I said, okay, let's do it. So, went to Radio Shack, went to Home Depot, picked up a couple of hand tools, a couple parts, some batteries and some lights. Over the next few days, I spent tinkering and I managed to cobble something together that worked. My dad would periodically check in on me, come to see if I had given up, maybe, or maybe the sheer extent of my determination. But after all of this, I discovered, hey, maybe I can actually do what I set my mind to. Now, 
This here is just a light. All I did was make a light turn on. But this got, got really exciting for me because it said, hey, what are the other possibilities that I can do? I'm in middle school. This is you know, not something that I normally get exposed to. And of course, I dove deep. These are my Nerf guns the next years. <laughs> there are a lot of wires in there. Not only did I start teaching myself display technology, power electronics, microcomputing systems, and sensors, but I started putting it all in my toys. Now keep in mind, the whole purpose of this was to build cooler toys than other kids. There was no grand reveal, there was no bigger plan to it, but I did discover, hey, with something that I really enjoy, with the exact same material as the shock value competition that I disliked so much before, I actually found a new passion that I really liked. Now what happens on the flip side of that coin? A lot of people don't have access to the kind of resources and the kind of support that I get all the time. When I see headlines like this, I like to think to myself, if everyone had access to the sort of resources I had growing up, how much better could the world be? Unfortunately, resources is not the only problem we face. Another thing is struggles that each and every one of us have. Our struggles are both diverse and unique. Everyone brings different struggles to the table, and I couldn't even hope to understand every single one of them. But I think what we do all have in common is a fear of failure. And that fear of failure permeates everything we do, and it unites us. But where does this failure come from? Well, I think the failure is three parts. First off, we set a very concrete, inflexible goal for ourselves. The next thing we do, we ask ourselves, did I fail? How do I do against it? And the third thing, we measure ourselves against others. Not only did I fail, but to what extent? Now, here's one thing we probably all have experienced failing. We all try to set these every year in hope that we can become a better person the next year, but we all know how these tend to turn out. So, with a show of hands, how many people set a New Year's resolution for 2019? All right, and now, if you set your New Year's resolution, but you only made it through January, and what about the people that have only made it through February? and if you think that you're gonna fail before the end of the year. And now we can see just how few people have their hands left up. But why is that? I wanna take my time here with you guys tonight to show you why you should be reframing your failures and how you can turn it into some positive thing. And I wanna do that with a story of one of my most successful failures. Now, in middle and high school, I considered myself an active person. You could find me on the rock walls, you could find me doing martial arts. I earned my black belt in Taekwondo. All of that physical fun came to a screeching halt one day when I was injured in martial arts. I ended up with a broken growth plate in my left knee, and I learned that not only would my knee not heal properly, but all of the connective tissue in my body had issues. So, what do you do with that information? For me, it led to a lot of lying around in pain, something that you can mitigate and support with custom-made bracing, as well as a careful routine. But I'd still go to bed every night and lay in pain before I fall asleep. Eventually, it got so bad, I started considering, what other options are there? Using a lot of Googling, I figured out there's quite a few lower limb replacements for people like amputees. Anyone may be missing a limb and you could get the whole thing replaced. Amazing technology. For me, there was nothing that was an assistive device for a still existing me. So, I decided to take my knowledge of Nerf guns and see what I could do. And this is what I came up with. I became an international arms dealer. The arm, 3D printed. We can see electronics sprawling out everywhere. There's wires running to my arm and we can see that it's being controlled by my mind. The whole thing works, it's pretty cool. Now, let's talk about that original goal. I had one goal. What was that goal? I was trying to build a leg. 
I hope you all noticed, that is 100% failure right there. <laughs> it's a very simple goal, not much to it, 100% failure though. So what happens if you don't let yourself be bound by those thoughts of failure? What happens if you allow yourself to flexibly change your goals? Now, if I hadn't had the audacity to flexibly change my goals, I wouldn't have gone from here to here to here. And this is a device that me and my team here at the University of Michigan produced, where we're still failing, building legs to this day. But without our passion and work, Julian here may never have had the opportunity to go through his childhood with a left arm. Now let's go back to those New Year's resolutions. Anybody who thinks they could make it all the way through the entire year, put your hands up. Anybody who thinks they could make it through half of the year, put your hands up. And anyone who thinks they've made it this far without failing their New Year's resolution, hands up. And anyone who's made a New Year's resolution at all, please put your hands up. See, this is what we should be focusing on. Less about how far away and how high-reaching our goals are, but more about if we took the initiative to try. Now, I want to leave you with three stages to success. One, I want all of you to give possibility a chance. What does this mean? Well, if you don't give possibility a chance, how do you know what you might be able to do? How do you know what can be done? Number two, I need you all to give others a chance. Everything that I do was not because of me alone. As Sir Isaac Newton famously said, if I see farther, it's by standing on the shoulders of giants. Now, some of you may not consider yourself giants, but I guarantee you, each and every one of you, have something unique and special to contribute to the world. But it's your job to share that with the rest of us. And finally, I want you to think, what can you do today to redefine your failures, to set new goals, and to help the world be a better place? Thank you very much. <laughs>